a little too tall for this shit. Anthony Slater Barry in your group. Did you know you had it going at some point in the third, or was there a moment where it was like, okay, this is kind of the time to take this over? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I can make every shot I shoot because I shoot good ones and I try to get to my spot. So when they call my number, I just try to go out there and be aggressive. Kevin, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American. Do you feel like you're back in the form that you had during the regular season before you got hurt? Yeah. Completely? Yeah. Yeah. Chris Haynes, ESPN. Uh, Pop announced this morning that Kawhi wasn't going to be, uh, wasn't going to play tonight. Did that, did you, did you believe him? Or how, how, <laughs> how, how, how serious were you think that, uh, you know, it was that he wouldn't be out? Uh, in those situations, I feel like you can never believe what Pop says. You know, he always has a, Feels like he always, mentally, he's always, uh, you know, a step ahead of everybody. So I didn't believe it until the ball tipped up, I guess, or two. And I guess 90 minutes is when you're supposed to put the, the, um, whoever inactive list, whatever that is. But yeah, I, I thought he was going to come out and and play, but uh, you know, they had who they had on the floor. They play extremely hard, no matter what. They run their sets. They. They keep it going, you know, no matter what. And they act, you know, obviously they need him to score and defend and do all the things that he does, but they still play extremely hard. They didn't, they didn't you know, show any signs of giving up at all. It's Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Kevin, it looked like you and David had some good chemistry as usual out there in that third quarter there. A few times you got him in the pick and roll, you got some backdoor layups and so forth. What was that chemistry like? And just what was that little stretch there like? I think he had like 17 points in a row or something crazy like that. Yeah. I did. I think it was 17, if I counted right. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, D. West is a great passer, you know, especially when you got the ball in the pick and roll. You know, you make that pocket pass, the defense relaxes just a little bit. Um, so, you know, he usually wants us to cut back doors, so I got a couple of those. And you get off the ball, just keep moving on the back side. I got a three in the corner. Um, so it felt good to see the ball go through the rim. It felt good to handle it a little bit more. Uh, but, you know. You gotta give the Spurs credit. You know they play, they play as tough. You know they, defensively they switch a lot. They're physical. They're aggressive, um, and they came out tonight with an edge. And I think we did a good job of just taking the punch and, and keeping it, keep playing and keep going throughout the whole game. And guys stepped up for us. Kevin, Steve Hapel from the Sports Exchange over here. Um, I was gonna ask that question. It seems like they were really up early on, and you guys kind of endured. Their little run yeah. in the third quarter, they got it to four, and then y'all just kind of put it away. Would, would you see any tiredness in them or anything? Um, yeah, I mean they don't have their <clears throat> they don't have you know their best score, so you know they rely on him. They run everything through him throughout the whole season. So taking him away, is, you know, it's hard, kind of hard to find your identity after that. But you know, then you got Lamarcus who still can go out there and score whenever he wants in the post, and and Powell and then Mano is playing like he's. 20 years old, you know, so they, they, and they got, you know, one of the best coaches to ever coach any sport. So it feels like they can, they can always stay in the game and always put up a fight and win. You know, you've seen that in the last series as well with this group. So we knew that, you know, especially at home, game three, a lot of energy in the building. They were going to come out and hit us in the mouth. And I think we did a good job of, um, you know, taking that punch and just keep playing. Kevin, R Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. So, so outside of game one, the, the, the games in this series haven't been all that all that close. Um, in the other series, it's 2-0, but that was the most lopsided victory in playoff history. Is it, it – I mean, what, what do you make of these playoffs and sort of – this is the conference finals and they haven't been all that competitive. I mean, obviously, there's injuries affecting these things, but just sort of what do you guys as competitors make of that getting to this stage? Um, so you're saying it's not been fun watching as a fan? Well, I mean, I don't know. Did you watch the you, know, you watch the game last night, or I mean, you can only talk about this. I'm sure it's fun to play. But. Yeah, if I was on the team that's up 40 points, I, I wouldn't. You know, you got to give them credit for being up 40 points, and you, you know, they they went out there and dominated. So, you know, that's what you want to do every time you step on the court. So, I'm sure they're excited about it. Um, but the fans, you know, they always want to see a tight game. They want to see a buzzer beater every game. But, you know, 
it's not like that sometimes. And, you know, every year has been um, – you have your years where you have great playoff series, four or five game sevens, and then some years you have what you see this playoffs. But as players, we want to go out there and win as, as by as much as possible um, and play as great as you can. You know, whatever happens, at, you know, with the score, it happens. So really that to the fans who feel upset. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Talk about the uh, impact you got from excuse me, <clears throat> JaVale in the first quarter, the energy he came out with early in the game. Um, he played he played great for us, you know, finishing a lot. Um, they're not coming off the three-point line as far as, you know, helping off of Clay, myself, Steph. So Draymond does a great job of <clears throat> finding him in the paint, him finishing over top of the rim. He runs extremely hard um, from end to end on, on, from the defense, you know, transition from defense to offense. And, you know, he does. He did a great job, I think, on the Lamarcus and guarding him and making him shoot tough shots. He's a he's a great player, but he made him shoot over his length. And you know, he played. He came out and played great, man. He he wants it. He works extremely hard, and um, you know, he you know he came over with 13 minutes, 16 points. We'll take that from him any night. Kevin, when you're playing, you're also reading the game and <clears throat> the, the rhythm of the game. And it looks like watching over the course of the season when. The offense clogs up, it slows down. Like you, your mentality changes a little bit. Is that am I on to something there, or do you do you change a little bit when you see the offense in that little struggle, a spot like that? Uh, I just play, man. I just play. If I see a lane open, sometimes I think too much. Sometimes I look to pass when I should look to score. Sometimes I look to score when I should pass. Uh, but I figured out if I just don't think at all, it's where I'm best. And you know, so I don't really know. You know, different games. Some games are different. Some situations are different. I may need to score 17 in a row. Or I may not. I may need to be a screener or a decoy, you know. So I try not to think out there. You know, the times when I do think early in the game, I was bad on the defensive end because I was thinking too much. And third quarter, I just went out there and played. Just, you know, not worried about anything. Just play every possession and try to play as hard as I can. And, you know, I, I was able to score because it started with my defense first. So. I try to think about offense, you know, whatever happens, whatever coach calls, I just try to go out there and run it as hard as I can.